Hello, my name is Kushal Loda, PhD student at Kasi. Today, on the behalf of the DC collaboration, I am going to present our latest results on extended dark energy analysis using DZ DR2 PAO measurements. Before I begin, I like to take a moment to thank our amazing sponsors and funding agencies for making this work possible. Let's start with a brief introduction. Dark energy is a mysterious component introduced to explain late time acceleration of the universe. The idea of the dark energy dates back to Einstein, who introduced a constant representing vacuum energy to balance the gravity. This constant became a key part of standard model lambda CDM after the discovery of universe acceleration in 1998. Although this model has been largely successful, combining cosmological datasets at different redshifts reveals a mismatch in the amount of the dark energy needed to explain this observation. This suggests that dark energy might not be constant, but evolving over time. This evolution can be quantified using equation of state W of C, which is ratio of pressure to density. In standard lambda CDM, this quantity is fixed to 1, where dark energy density is constant. But to test the rest redshift evolution, we use W0 WA parameterization, where dark energy evolves with redshift. Latest DAISY data, when combined with CMB and supernovae, provide a tightest constraint on the dynamics of the dark energy. Depending upon the supernovae combination we use, uh, we see a deviation away from the lambda CDM that varies from 2.8 to 4.2 sigma. The goal of this work is to test the robustness of this deviation using different parametric and non-parametric methods. To better understand this constraint, we can convert these contours to redshift evolution as shown on the left figure. On the top, we have W greater than minus 1 at low redshift to W less than minus 1 at low redshift. This evolution is also reflected in dark energy density as a bump shown in the bottom plot. The peak of the density is marked with solid gray line where W crosses minus 1 and dash gray line shows matter dark energy equality. Next, we show deacceleration parameter Q of Z that indicates how acceleration rate of the universe has been changing with redshift. The dotted vertical line around Z equals to 0 0.8 marks the point when the universe started accelerating. The evolving dark energy indicates the cosmic acceleration started earlier than predicted by lambda CDM. However, in the present epoch, this acceleration rate appears to be slowing down. To test the robustness of these results, we examine several alternative parameterization for the dark energy. First, we start by considering several two-parameter extensions with different functional forms. And as we can see in the plot, they capture similar trends at low redshift. Despite the differences in high Z behavior, they give identical or worse fit to the data compared to CPL, indicating data's inability to distinguish between these functional forms. Rather than restricting ourselves to two-parameter extension, we can introduce more degrees of freedom to see what kind of a trends data prefer. Here, we use Chebyshev polynomial to expand W of Z around minus 1. In top right figure, I am showing our results for n equals to 3. Uh, in orange, we are showing without supernovae. In blue, with supernovae included. The black dash line shows predictions for lambda CDM. In addition to this, we also explore giving similar freedom to dark energy density, which even allows for negative values and follows the similar trend. We can repeat this exercise for different values of the n, and we find that fit to the data saturates around 2 for W of Z and 3 for dark energy density. Moving on to our next section where we use non-parametric techniques to reconstruct dark energy. We start by binning dark energy. Here on the left plot, I am showing the results from three uniform bins ranging from 0 to 2.1 and one additional bin to model high Z behavior. The lowest redshift bin shows a deviation of more than 3 sigma with an overall trend consistent with W0 WA. This results remain fairly robust when additional bins are introduced or even when we provide similar freedom to dark energy density, illustrating data's preference for positive pro-DE. Another non-parametric technique we cover is a Gaussian process reconstruction 
where instead of writing any parametric form, one can use Gaussian process regression to draw samples of W of Z from the functional space and test them against the data. On the right, we show equation of state reconstruction from Gaussian process using DAISY plus CMB plus union three and find our posteriors are consistent with trends seen in W naught WA. Here we show how constraints change when different combination of data sets are considered with DAISY plus CMB in green, DAISY plus union, uh, union three in orange and all three data set combined. The top row shows equation of state. The middle row shows the normalized dark energy density and the bottom row shows the deacceleration parameter. You can see the evidence for the slowing down of the acceleration in all three data set combinations. Now that we have tested robustness of these trends, what does it mean for dark energy? To answer this question, we consider three dark energy classes. First class is called thawing. It captures a subclass of a quintessence model where field is initially frozen due to the Hubble friction. But as universe expands, this field slowly thaws away from constant. This kind of a behavior can be captured by equation described on the top right. As an illustrative example, we show how axion field dynamics can be translated into W of C, which you can see can be easily captured by our parameterization. Please note this parameterization does not have a phantom crossing and imposes a monotonic behavior. On the top right, we are showing W of Z constraint from DAISY plus CMB plus union three. And in the bottom plot, the parameter constraints from uh, three different supernovae combination. Next, we consider an emergent class where dark energy density undergoes a second order phase transition. This kind of a behavior can be captured using this parameterization shown on the left, where the delta captures how steep is the phase transition and ZT is a redshift for matter dark energy quality. The results with different data combination, DAISY, DAISY plus CMB, DAISY plus union three, and all three combines can be seen in the bottom plot. The last class that we explore is a mirage class. This is more of a phenomenological class where we want to maintain distance to the CMB as in Lambda CDM, but allow for the late time dynamics, giving us a mirage of constant W that we see in the data. On the right, you could see this is also roughly direction where our W naught W constraints lie in DZ DR1 and DR2. Finally, we perform a model comparison and find that W naught WA provides a better fit than thawing quintessence indicating data's preference for rise followed by decrease into dark energy density. To summarize, we see a strong hints of dynamical dark energy Non-parametric reconstructions align very well with W naught WA, such as Gaussian process, binning, and orthogonal polynomials. The current data prefers a models with W crossing minus one compared to scalar fields with rapid late time evolution. If we take data at face value, then our results suggest more richer dark energy sector than expected, potentially giving clues to the fundamental new physics. Thank you for listening.